Hello everybody, this is Dale from Hugh Dale Photography and this is just a quick tutorial on a little bit of editing and we're going to be using the software Raw Therapy which has been specifically designed for editing raw photographs. So when you open Raw Therapy you'll come straight into the file browser and this is exactly what it says on the tin and allows you to search your computer for any files you want to edit. So I pop my files on my desktop into a little folder and I'll just show you how very quickly the navigation works. It's quite simple. There's all your drives. I'm going to see users, Dale, my user account. Um, and then I'm going to click on desktop and there's my folder. And today we're going to be editing this photograph. So I've double clicked that, which has opened it straight into the editor. As you can see, editor on the side here if you want to click back to file browser. To give you a bit of an interface update, basically the top area here, this is what I like to call the film strip, and this shows you all the other photographs in the file. To the left of that we have our histogram, below that our navigator, then our history, this shows you everything you've done so far, and then a snapshot section, and this is really cool, this allows you to take, well, a snapshot at any point in the editing, so you can return to it and you can see what you've changed. So I'm going to actually add one now so that we uh, we can see what the photo started as. And let's jump straight in. So on the right hand side you can see we've got different tabs and different modules and basically we're going to go straight into the exposure module which is always activated and we're just going to use this slider here which is the exposure compensation slider and I'm just going to push that up so we can see yeah, there we go. We can brighten up the bottom of the photograph there. Unfortunately, in doing that, though, we've lost the detail in the top of the photograph. But that's no problem. We'll fix that now. Now, I'm going to close that back down again. If I was out and about and uh, there was a big difference in the light between my foreground and background, I might use something called a neutral density filter. It would allow me to darken the top of the photograph while leaving the bottom lighter. But since I've captured this photograph in RAW format, I can actually do that in post-processing. So what I'm going to look for here is the module called Graduated Filter. I'm going to click the on switch to turn that on, and we can see straight away it's already applied something. So let's open the module up. This strength slider here, if I push that up, you can see the sky actually darkens. Basically, it's just lowering the exposure of that area and then fading it out as it comes to the bottom. This button here gives us a handy grid and we can see a little bit better what's going on. So this is the midpoint and this is the range from which it's graduating out that filter. So that's cool, but it doesn't quite fit because in reality the sort of shape of the sky goes along this sort of path along here. But that's no problem. What we can do then is just adjust the angle a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong way. There we are. And then we can use the X and Y sliders to allow us to sort of position that just a little bit better. So I'm going to lower that down just a bit to there. Maybe I'll bring the feather in or I'll leave it out a bit like that. No, I think I'll bring it in a bit. And uh, maybe just about there. Yeah, I think that'll do. Maybe a bit stronger on the sky. I know it's quite a colourful sky. So I'm going to turn that grid off again and just close that graduated filter. Um, but I'm obviously going to leave the switch on there. And I'm just going to pop back up to my exposure and now I'm going to readjust that exposure compensation slider a little bit just to bring it all out. There we are. Now, the next edit is just to add a bit of contrast. Now, you can add a bit of contrast to the slider. As you can see, by default, it's already added some. I could push that up some more. And, and that works fine, but I often find that using the contrast sliders can be a bit of a blunt sword, really, a bit of a blunt knife. It, it, it sort of applies things not in, a, not in such a great way. So to be a bit more defined, we have tone curves. Now that was already on, so I'll turn it off a second so you can see what it looks like. This is how it will appear to you. We click that button to turn it on, and then we click the arrow button next to it, which will give us this little sub menu, and then we can click custom. As you can see already, actually, it's remembered my settings from last time, so I'll just remove them by clicking the back button here. And all I'm gonna do is a really, really simple edit where I'm just gonna pull in these two pointers a little bit. So this one's going to go in a little bit that, that way, and this one's going to go in a little bit that way. And all that's done is it's made the shadow areas a little bit darker and the light areas a little bit lighter. It's just, I like to think that it adds a little bit of punch to the picture. 
You can also do things such as, I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll close this one down for a second. That's fine. Oops. There we are. And then I'll open my second one and I'll show you, you can do a little bit of a curve. So if I add a point just by clicking in the middle there, then I add another one and pull it up. You can add a bit of a tone curve and you can see that's given a real boost to the colours and to the contrast of the photograph. Now, personally I think that's a little bit much, but for some people that might be exactly the boost they're looking for. So I'm going to turn that off, that's something else you can do. I might just push that up a little bit. Next is the saturation slider. Again, something else I would encourage people to, to sort of play with a bit, especially if you're shooting in raw format, as raw images do tend to be a little bit bland. So I'm just going to push that up a little bit and we can see what effect it's having on the picture. Now, saturation does tend to affect oranges and reds more than anything else. You know, if you've got people in your photograph, it will make them appear a little bit more tanned. And if you push it too far, they'll look a bit more like they've had a very bad spray tan. So I'm going to pull this back down again. Not, not too far down, though. I do want to keep some of the colour. So there we are. We've now got our edited picture. We've changed the exposure we've added a graduated filter, we've added a bit of saturation, and we've added a bit of a tone curve. Now the last thing I'm going to do is just go into this next tab and add a bit of sharpening because if you've been shooting in raw format you really should sharpen your images a bit because the camera isn't doing that for you. Down here I'm going to click the one-to-one -one button so we can zoom right in. I'm just going to grab this and move to an area where I can see a bit of de detail. There we are. So of these two sliders, the amount and the radius, I'm just going to push them up together a little bit, bit by bit. There we are. And that's just sharpened that a little bit. And if I turn the module on and off, we can see what difference that's made. So there we are. There's all our edits. Really, really simple basic edits, really quick edits. Things that you should really be doing when you're shooting in raw format, just to give pictures that bit of punch that they miss from the processing that a JPEG would have. If I just go back and fit that back to the screen again. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my final snapshot. There we are. And I'll just click back to the other one. And we can really see what a difference we've made to that photograph. Huge difference. Of course, the trick of editing is to always be a bit subtle. I may have pushed things a little bit too far in areas here just to show off what they do a bit. Um, and you might think this picture looks a little a bit unnatural for that. And I, I wouldn't disagree. Um, it's always good to take a break and come back to editing or to, to lower effects a bit so that they're not so obvious. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm going to carry on like this for a minute. The next thing we want to do is export our photograph so that we can use it to print or to put onto social media. And what you need to do is just right click the photograph and click put it in queue. Then we go to our queue section over here and there we are, there's our photograph. We're going to use a JPEG file format because that's most commonly used by printers and by social media sites. And also sites for portfolios like DeviantArt or if you have a Wix account or a Squarespace account. JPEG quality will leave quite high, although if you're having trouble uploading your picture, you could try lowering that a bit to see if it uploads a bit better. Some websites do have um, a certain amount that they allow, a certain quality that they allow. Subsampling is not something we need to worry about right now, so we'll leave that as it is. And then finally, we just need to check that it's going to the right place. Mine is going to go to my desktop, but you can click and hold on that section, and then you can click Other, and you can direct yourself to any folder that you see fit. So I'm just going to cancel that and leave it as de desktop. And then finally I'm just going to click start processing. And that's going to process that picture for me right now. There we are, all done. And now if I go back to my desktop, please excuse the mess, you can see there it is, our final photograph. And if I double click that, it opens in Windows Photo Viewer and that's ready to be uploaded, ready to go online, that is ready to do all sorts with really. So that's it. We've done a bit of editing. We've pulled pictures into raw therapy. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.